Hello friends, this video on surface chemistry part 6 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Now you see there are two type of adsorption. One is the physical adsorption, right? Physical adsorption, the short term, it fizzy absorption, fizzy absorption, right? So in this case, there is no chemical reaction. The, for example, uh, accumulation of dust particles in the skin adsorption of uh, hydrogen or chlorine gas by charcoal or this uh, water molecules adsorption on the plastic. The next is the chemical adsorption, right? So if you see that is called chemisorption also. Chemical, chemi word from the chemical comes chemisorption. Good example is rusting of iron. So here actually a chemical reaction takes place on the surface. So we'll not discuss these things in detail. Physical adsorption and chemical adsorption. The first is physical adsorption, that is fizzy shopson. So in this case, if you see the accumulation of gas or small particles on the surface of the adsorbent occurs on the account of V van der Waal force. V van der Waal. Example, this dust particle sticks to the skin because of weak van der Waal force. The gas molecules stick to the charcoal, weak van der Waal force. The water molecules stick to the plastic, it's weak van der Waal force. Or this water molecules stick to its leaves because of weak van der Waal force. Correct? There is no chemical reaction. There is no chemical reaction between adsorbent and adsorbent. There is no chemical reaction. For example, in this case, there is no reaction between the dust and the skin. There is no reaction between the gas and charcoal. There is no reaction between the water and the plastic. There is no reaction between the water and the Right? Since there is no chemical reaction, it's all weak water bulk force here. So, delta H value is less actually. And we have told adsorption is always an exothermic process. So, it has to be negative. But delta H is in the range of minus 40 kilojoule per mole. It is less as compared to chemical adsorption. We'll see that, right? They are mildly exothermic. Mildly exothermic. And generally, they occur at low temperature. Low temperature. If you see all these reactions, uh, the dust sticking to your body, low temperature. This experiment we performed at low temperature. Generally, they happen at low temperature. Right? So here, Van der Waal force is the one which is responsible. Van der Waal force can be either dipole-dipole interaction, London force, all the kind of force are responsible for physical adsorption. So the chemical adsorption or chemisorption, right? So in this case, what happened? The adsorbate are held to adsorbent by chemical bond. So there is something called adsorbate, adsorbate and we have something called adsorbent and they are held by a chemical bond. For example, oxygen is my adsorbate and iron is my adsorbent. They are held by a chemical bond, right? Iron and oxygen react and forms and there is nothing but rusting of iron. It's a very known equation and these chemical bonds can be ionic or covalent. Since this involves reaction and in this reaction if you see uh, any reaction this is a chart we have seen there is a barrier here so it involves high energy of action. So if you have any doubt on activation energy you can watch the previous chapter video where we have explained, explained the activation energy concept, right? It involves high energy of activation. Since it involves high energy of activation, it is also called activated adsorption. It is also called activated adsorption because it involves high energy of adsorption. In this actually, the chemical reaction takes place. Okay, 
Now, these two kind of adsorption which I talked about, physical adsorption and chemical adsorption, actually they can happen together also. Right? It is not necessary that only one type of adsorption will happen. So, both can ha happen together also. Right? For example, if you see this is hydrogen uh, and nickel. So, when you do hydrogenation of any substance, we do we use, we use hydrogen and we use nickel catalyst, nickel plate. Right? Nickel plate, it provides the surface. So here if you see, first the hydrogen is adsorbed in nickel by the Van der Waals force and then hydrogen molecules dissociate to form hydrogen atoms, correct? And that is my chemical absorption where hydrogen molecules break into hydrogen atoms and they stick to this nickel plate. If you see, this is my hydrogen atom, will show you a animation for this. The first one, if you see, the metal adsorb hydrogen gas. Correct. So this is my what physical adsorption. This is my metal, and this is my hydrogen gas, and this is adsorbed. Correct. This is my physical adsorption. Once again, just hydrogen. This is my hydrogen. Hydrogen atom is adsorbed by this metal. This blue one is my nickel metal. Right, this is my nickel. So this is now only physical adsorption took place. Now what happens if you see this bond becomes weakened. Actually, if you see this, this is the metal uh, bonds actually becomes weakened. Metal comes near the surface, and this bond will break now. You see, this bond will break. This bond broke, and it forms what? Two hydrogen, right? One H two becomes two H. So here, if you see, chemical absorption took place. Now, if you, you you must have seen this in the hydrogenation actually. Now these two it attached to this alkene, and alkene moves on, right? This alkene became alkane, and another set of alkene comes, and again same thing happened. First, hydrogen molecule gets absorbed on this nickel physical absorption, and it breaks. Then Two hydrogen chemical adsorption, and then again alkene comes and it takes this two hydrogen and becomes alkane. Again, another set comes. This is how it happens, right? So, here, uh, and if you see, this is nothing but a, a nickel is acting as a catalyst, right? So, if you see in a catalyst, adsorption is playing a critical role. We'll discuss about these in details when we talk about the catalyst in this chapter, correct? So, the point I'm trying to drive here is both physical and chemical adsorption can happen together. Okay. Now we have discussed physical and chemical adsorption, but we didn't discuss in details. Let's understand some of the features of the physical adsorption now, and then we'll discuss the features of the chemical adsorption. Right? The first is the lack of specificity. It is not specific because the adsorbent doesn't show any preference for a particular gas. If you use charcoal, charcoal can absorb hydrogen gas, chlorine gas, nitrogen gas, doesn't matter. Why? Because the critical uh, thing that is here is Van der Waals force, right? And Van der Waals force is universal. It is universal. So it is not specific, right? Because Van der Waals force is the driving thing here that is running the show. And Van der Waals force is universal, so it is not specific. For example, char here, this leaves can absorb water molecule. Leaves can absorb milk also. Leaves can absorb paint also. It, leaves can absorb anything. Similarly, your skin can absorb water. It can absorb some uh, milk. It can absorb dust. Same thing. This plastic can absorb cold rain. It can absorb milk. It can absorb water. It can absorb paint. A lot of things it can absorb. Correct. The second thing is, it does depend on nature of absorbent. It does depend on nature of adsorbent. See, amount of the gas or liquid that is adsorbed by a given adsorbent, that depends on the nature of adsorbent, whether it's gas or liquid. So if you take an easily liquefiable gas, they can easily be adsorbed. 
For example, if you take one gram of charcoal, right? It charcoal, it will absorb sulfur, charcoal, yeah. it will absorb SO2 more, but methane it will absorb less. The same gram of charcoal will adsorb SO2 more, sulfur dioxide. So the nature of adsorbent matters, right? So if it is easily liquefiable gases or liquid, it can easily be adsorbed. The next is reversible nature. So these are reversible. Physical adsorption is reserve, uh, reversible. You can just heat it and you get it back. For example, as I told, charcoal is used to store hydrogen gas. So you push high, uh, pass hydrogen gas through charcoal, the charcoal surface will adsorb hydrogen gas. But the moment you heat it up, the hydrogen gas is released back. Right? So physical adsorption of a gas by a solid is reversible. Correct? So I can write it as an equilibrium reaction actually. If you have adsorbate, you have adsorbent that will be in the equilibrium with the same adsorbate plus adds, adsorbent plus some heat. So you pass some heat, you get back this. Correct. The next is surface area. So as I told adsorption is totally dependent on surface area. It is directly proportional to surface area. So that's why here also physical adsorption, in fact chemical adsorption, both kind of absorption, adsorption is tightly uh, dependent on the surface area. And that's why we uh, break the metals or the adsorbent into small, small piece so that it can have more surface area and it becomes a good adsorbent, right? So we generally talk about the finely divided, finely divided adsorbent why because the finely divided adsorbent has a more surface area and more surface area means more adsorption the next is enthalpy of adsorption so enthalpy of adsorption is low we have discussed this right enthalpy of adsorption is low normally 20 to 40 kilojoule per mole right it is mild, mildly exothermic mildly exothermic right it occurs at very very low temperature not very low but normally at low temperature correct these are the physical properties uh, features of the physical adsorption the next is chemical adsorption so let's see the features of the chemical adsorption the first is the highly specific see it occurs only when there is a possibility of chemical reaction between the adsorbent and adsorbent Example, gold will not adsorb oxygen, but iron can adsorb oxygen because iron can react with oxygen, right? Similarly, hydrogen it is adsorbed on metals because hydro metal hydride can be formed. So hydrogen and normally if you see hydrogen and oxygen can be adsorbed by reactive metals, I'll say, because they'll form a metal oxides and metal hydride. But if you talk about the non-reactive metals like gold, it will not react with hydrogen, it will not react with oxygen. So in that case, and thus you see, the iron rusting is more prominent. You, you never see gold getting rusted, correct? So it happens only when there's a possibility of chemical reaction, so it is specific. It is irreversible. Obviously, once the iron is rusted, you can't, can't get it back, correct? Because, see, the chemical reaction happened, the new compound got formed. So it is generally, irreversible correct it is very very slow why very slow because it involves high activation energy right it involves high activation energy so it is very very slow right there's high activation energy. since there is a high activation energy it is slow it occurs at very high temperature since again 
it has a high, high activation energy it needs a little high temperature to for the reaction to happen correct also high pressure and high temperature both favors chemical adsorption you have seen that in physical adsorption we are looking for low temperature in this case we are looking for high temperature and high pressure surface area is same in in the physical adsorption also we need more surface area and chemical adsorption also we need more surface area right so enthalpy of adsorption as i told it is high right it is very it is high and delta h is almost in the range of 80 to 240 kilojoule per mole. Why? Why it is so high? Because it involves bond formation. Right? Old bonds are broken, new bonds are created. So that delta H is pretty high. So enthalpy of adsorption is also high, temperature also is required very high, and it is little slow. All these three things are linked actually. Correct. Now let's compare these two kind of adsorption. This is physical adsorption, chemical adsorption. So in physical adsorption, the example I give is the water molecules getting adsorbed by leaves and the chemical adsorption. A good example is the rusting of iron. So physical adsorption, it arises because of the wonderful force. Chemical adsorption arises because of chemical bond formation. It is not specific. Physical adsorption, because of the wonderful force, it is universal. It is highly specific because bond has to be formed, chemical reaction should take place. It's so reversible in nature. This is irreversible because there is a bond formation. It is mildly exothermic. And this is highly exothermic. Enthalpy of adsorption is low. Enthalpy of adsorption is high. Low temperature is good for physical adsorption. High temperature is good for uh, physical adsorption in fact high pressure is also good right so thus it decreases with the increase in temperature because the low temperature is favoring this adsorption it decreases when you increase the temperature right and here it is other way around it, it, it increases with the increase in temperature please note these two are exactly same actually these two points right since uh, there is no chemical bond formation so activation energy is not required here higher activation energy is required because the new bonds are formed. Both increases with the increase in surface area. And this has multi-molecular layer adsorption. This has unimolecular layer of adsorption. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch more videos. Attempt free online tests, get pre-study materials, find tutors and mentors and much more. Thanks once again.